Peace, peace, this your host, Sila Shalom. And the topic of discussion today is called Addressing STD, HIV, and AIDS. Now, a great majority of people get STD through sex, as we know. Now, when you are not knowledgeable about your health, it can be vital to your survival, both male and female. When both male and females get to know one another, especially if it turns into intercourse, and if the skin is smooth, no spots, no bumps, most will assume that that person is healthy. But the truth is that you can look good outwardly and inwardly be carrying who knows what. And this is how a lot of us get caught out there. Now the area in the body where a lot of sexual transmitted disease reside before spreading throughout other areas of the body. In females is the urethria in the vagina and the males is the glans penis or the penile urethria. Now disease thrive in a warm environment which in return those two areas, the urethria in women and the penile urethria in males are warm environments where disease can thrive in. And when the mucous membrane is compromised in the urethria and the penile urethria, which the mucous membrane is responsible for fighting off toxins and diseases, this will allow the disease to enter the cell if those areas, if those mucous membranes become compromised through the infection. Now gonorrhea is an STD and the signs and symptoms for a male is inflammation of the penile urethria, and this condition gives a burning sensation while urination takes place. Another sign of males is discharge from the penile urethria, and this discharge is like a pus being mucus. And the signs of gonorrhea in women is vaginal discharge, where the discharge is a pus, basically mucus and lower abdominal pain. Now chlamydia, which is another STD, in men, the signs and symptoms are inflammation of the penile urethria, burning while urination, and discharge from the penile urethria, testicle pain or swelling, fever, and also this can lead to prosthetic inflammation. Now in women, the signs and symptoms are cervicitis, pelvic inflammation, infection of the uterus, fallopian tubes, and ovaries, abnormal vaginal bleeding, and discharge, painful urination. And chlamydia is a disease that can thrive in women for years before being discovered. Now if you notice with these two STDs, chlamydia and gonorrhea, one thing that stands out is inflammation. And infection is another sign of inflammation. Now let's address HIV and AIDS. The first thing to understand is the etymology of the word. HIV meaning human immunodeficiency virus and AIDS meaning acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So both HIV and AIDS are one and the same as far as being an immunodeficiency. So this disease is an attack on the immune system and the lymphatic system and the skin. The immune system and the lymphatic system's purpose is to fight off disease. So if your immune system is weak, you will be exposed to any disease. Now as I stated in the past videos, Disease is acid and mucus regardless of what disease it is. In the case of HIV and AIDS, it's mucus found in the immune system, lymphatic system, and the skin. That's when those areas become compromised. Now, when I was personally dealing with a person with AIDS, I personally noticed they were coughing up a lot of mucus, which gives us the physical property being mucus. Now, here are some of the signs and symptoms. They are broken down into three stages, the way they classify it. The first stage is acute infection, the second is clinical latency, and the third is AIDS. Now the first, acute infection, acute meaning severe, shows signs of respiratory infection, a flu-like condition, fevers, throat inflammation, lesions, and sores. Now when we observe the second stage, clinical latency, the symptoms are fever, weight loss, gastrointestinal problems, and muscle pains. See, anytime you're dealing with those muscle pains, it means that Mucus is compromising your bones. Likewise, with the acid, it's compromising in your bones. Lack of oxygen in the bones will create pain. Now the third stage being AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, the signs and symptoms include all of the above. Now if you notice, there's a similarity between HIV and AIDS, chlamydia, gonorrhea, any STD, is that it deals with two things, inflammation and mucus. That's the root of those diseases. So how do we cure these diseases? First, by understanding that 
This is a disease that attacks the immune system. So the immune system is the focus. The next thing to understand is that the immune system needs iron to strengthen itself in order for it to be healthy to fight off diseases. So in order to remove HIV and AIDS, chlamydia, gonorrhea, any of the STDs, your body needs a lot of iron. And in return, iron carries oxygen and will help strengthen and build up the immune system, removing the mucus, neutralizing the acid in the immune system, the lymphatic system in the skin. That's how you will restore the body. Now, if you notice with all these diseases, gonorrhea, chlamydia, HIV, and AIDS, they all have the same symptoms, being inflammation, being acid, and mucus. And this is the foundation of all disease, mucus and acid. Now, as I stated in the previous videos, that disease is cell deprivation, regardless of what disease it is. The lack of oxygen to a cell creates cell deprivation. And mucus compromising a cell creates cell deprivation. In the case of gonorrhea, chlamydia, HIV, and AIDS, is both lack of oxygen, which in return creates an inflammatory condition on the cell, and mucus compromising the cell, which is basically like gum on the cell suffocating the cell gradually. These are the physical conditions. This is why iron is so vital when addressing gonorrhea, chlamydia, HIV, AIDS, regardless of any of the STDs, because the iron is carrying oxygen, which will help restore the cell and remove the mucus and neutralize the acid. Now, the iron that doctors give you at the pharmaceutical stores or at the pharmaceutical world comes from the inorganic iron rock, which is not digestible for the body. It'll create um, intestinal constipation, it'll create constipation, and it'll create a strain on the intestines. Now the required iron that the body needs comes from native plants. Now the medicinal herbal tea that I make is high in iron, based off native plants, using the leaves, the stalk, and the root. And this is why I'm able to see the results from people who have taken the tea and have gotten healed and treated, because the body is getting iron from an organic state coming from the plant and it's electrical the inorganic iron is not electrical the body is electrical so we need electrical foods and that's the difference between taking iron from the oxide state coming from the rock inorganically compared to taking it from the plant organically and it's electrical and even in the bible it states the leaves are for the healing of the nations and with that i'd like to say peace and blessings shalom